Napoleon's Imperial Guard is one of the most distinguished military forces in history. The Old Guard in particular earned a legendary reputation that struck fear in those who faced them. Throughout Napoleon's rule, the Guard would serve numerous roles, as bodyguards, a final tactical reserve, and as an example that the rest of the army was to follow. After Napoleon's defeat in Russia, the Guard would serve as one of the only elements preventing the wider army's collapse. In the early years of the Imperial Guard, it was a relatively small force. Numbering roughly only 8,000 men in 1804, it would grow alongside the Empire as Napoleon massively expanded the formation. In 1805, the Guard numbered 12,000 men, and by 1810, 56,000. By the beginning of the invasion of Russia in 1812, the Imperial Guard had swelled to over 100,000 men, with its own infantry, cavalry, artillery, and other supporting elements. Along with its ever-growing size, the Imperial Guard had also earned a fearsome reputation, both among France's enemies and the rest of the Grand Armée. While the entire Guard did not march into Russia and Napoleon used them as the army's reserve for much of the campaign, they nonetheless suffered large losses, especially during the retreat. The Guard that marched into Russia was not the same one that marched out. In 1813, Napoleon was faced with a growing number of enemies and needed to quickly replace the army that he had lost in Russia. With no other real options, tens of thousands of conscripts were hastily raised and prepared for the war to come. Conscripts, however, are not the most reliable troops in battle, especially when the odds are against them. To try and at least alleviate this issue, Napoleon used the prestige of his guard to try and stiffen the resolve of his army. Origins of the Young Guard can go back as far as 1804, with select conscripts forming part of the Imperial Guard in their own battalions and attached to regiments of the guard. The true Young Guard would not be formed until 1809, when eight regiments, four grenadiers, and four chasseurs were formed out of the best conscripts available. Officers came from the Old Guard and NCOs from the Middle Guard, making the Young Guard a strong fighting force. The Young Guard fought in Spain and would participate in the invasion of Russia, numbering 14 regiments, again split evenly between grenadiers and chasseurs. After the disaster of 1812, the Young Guard provided the force that Napoleon would rely upon to keep his army fighting. In 1813, the Young Guard was enlarged to 28 regiments. Filled with conscripts, the Young Guard was not the same fighting force it had been in terms of quality, but what it lacked in quality could potentially be made up for both in quantity and the willingness to fight, something the Young Conscripts had in abundance. The Young Guard would play a critical role in a number of battles during 1813, including the Battle of Dresden that took place on the 26th and 27th of August. It was the Young Guard that held firm many of France's positions during the first day of battle, and they managed to overwhelm the coalition's right flank on the second day. Despite being outnumbered by the coalition, Dresden was one of Napoleon's greatest victories. Even as Napoleon's situation continued to deteriorate, the Guard, and especially the Young Guard, fought fiercely, from Leipzig to France itself. In 1814, the Young Guard was expanded once more, with a total of 12 regiments being formed, for a total of 40 regiments. Napoleon was desperately trying to hold back multiple armies invading France itself. By that point, however, the Guard and Napoleon's army as a whole were severely depleted. France simply faced too many enemies all at once and could not hope to hold them all off. Tactically, Napoleon could gain victories even when outnumbered severely, but strategically, he was in a hopeless situation. After the Battle of Leipzig, there was almost no chance for victory, but despite that fact, Napoleon continued to fight on with his troops. Ultimately, the will of Napoleon's marshals to fight on would break before the will of the army did. Before his abdication in 1814, Napoleon had done everything he could to try and fight on. His Imperial Guard during 1813 and 1814 formed the backbone of his forces. If the will of the Guard had not held, then he may have faced ultimate defeat much sooner. Upon Napoleon's return in 1815, he completely rebuilt his Imperial Guard, from a small corps of mostly old guard that had accompanied him in his exile to the island of Elba. If not for that personal bodyguard of elite troops, Napoleon's return to France might have failed. Sixteen new regiments of young guard were formed for the upcoming campaign, with eight regiments of old guard. The third and fourth regiments of Old Guard, in terms of quality, were not up to standards of the first and second regiments, and were widely referred to as Middle Guard by the rest of the army. 
In terms of quality as a whole, the Young Guard was much weaker than it had been when it was first founded, or even its much enlarged size during 1813. Only a few regiments of Young Guard would accompany Napoleon during his campaign. The Old and Middle Guard, however, were a much more formidable force. In the Old Guard especially, Napoleon still had a small but elite force that he could rely upon, and rely upon them he would during the Battle of Waterloo. During the battle, Napoleon's guard was engaged heavily, both against the Prussians at Plancenoit and against Wellington's troops during the final French attack. At Plancenoit, the Prussians threatened the French rear so severely that the young guard was sent to hold the village. Fierce fighting ensued, but eventually the young guard were pushed nearly completely out of the village, prompting Napoleon to send two battalions of the old guard to retake it. The fighting at Plancenoit would be the fiercest of the entire battle, even more so than at Hugomont or La Haye Sainte but eventually the French would lose control of the village. Napoleon's final hope to win the battle was likewise placed on his guard, when he sent the middle guard with elements of the old guard in support to assault Wellington's line one final time. After the failure of the attack, Napoleon's army quickly collapsed against the combined Anglo-Prussian force. By the time of Napoleon's defeat in 1815, France was exhausted from its constant wars with almost the entirety of Europe. Its forces lacked supplies, uniforms, and in many cases proper training. It nonetheless managed to put up a tough fight in less than ideal circumstances. When the guard was being however, both at Plancenoit by the Prussians and by the British army, there was nothing left the French could do to win the battle, much less the war. The Imperial Guard represented the finest fighting force Napoleon had to offer, drawn from the best troops of his Grand Armée. It proved its quality in battle, especially after the disaster in 1812. It stepped up to be Napoleon's main fighting force in 1813 and 1814. In 1815, at Waterloo, the Guard bled dearly to try and win the battle. Without a force such as the Imperial Guard for the rest of the army to look up to, to be inspired by, or to be sent into battle when victory hung in the balance, Napoleon's empire would have collapsed long before his defeat in 1815. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you'd like to see more on the Napoleonic or Revolutionary Wars, check out my other videos I've made on the topics.